from Laredo, Texas. And today he's attempting to follow in the footsteps of his older brother, Gabby, and win a world championship. Orlando is said to be faster and more of a boxer than his brother, but he also has 16 knockouts in 21 professional bouts. Kelvin Seabrooks from Charlotte, North Carolina, is a late bloomer who won the IBF World Bantamweight crowd last year. Today, he'll defend it for the fourth time live on CBS Sports Saturday. From the Sands Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey, our Budweiser Boxing Series continues with another World Championship main event. There's a packed house here at the Sands as the undercard is already underway. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Ryan. Welcome to the start of another big weekend of boxing action here on CBS Sports. Coming up shortly, Kelvin Seabrooks puts his IBF World Bantamweight crown on the line against Orlando Canizales. Orlando's brother Gabby won a 12-round decision against Seabrooks four years ago. But according to Seabrooks and his manager Bill Reynolds, Orlando is more dangerous than Gabby, a world champion in his own right. Tomorrow on CBS Sports Sunday, we'll be back right here for an intriguing rematch between Freddie Pendleton and Razai Aluja Bramble, the former Livingstone Bramble and the former WBA World Lightweight Champion. Speaking of former world champions on the comeback trail, last night in San Remo, Italy, Donald Curry, the former WBA World Welterweight Champion, stopped Gianfranco Rossi in the 10th round to capture the WBC World Super Welterweight title. During the course of the fight, Curry had the champion down six times in all. Here in the seventh round, you just saw the first of two knockdowns in the seventh round, and most of the knockdowns came via a short left hook thrown by Curry. Nonetheless, despite the fact that Curry went on to victory as we watch his second knockdown, he was a very tired-looking fighter with cuts over both eyes at the end. When they completed round number nine, Curry was on the stool looking very much like a tired and beaten fighter. However, Rossi was the man who failed to answer the bell. His corner evidently did not allow him to come out, even though, as you can see, he look, actually looked a little fresher than Curry. But a big victory for Donald Curry. After a couple of bad defeats, he now finds himself once again as a world champion. And what's next for him? Well, naturally, Donald Curry, like everybody else, is talking about Sugar Ray Leonard. Meantime, here in Atlantic City, Kelvin Seabrooks against Orlando Canizales is not the only major battle on the boardwalk this weekend. The venerable convention hall has been packed with sports fans battling to pick up their fair share of sports memorabilia at the ninth annual National Sports Collectors on July 24th. Right now, we're approaching fight time. Orlando Canizales of Laredo, Texas, challenges Kelvin Seabrooks for the IBF World Bantamweight Championship when CBS Sports Saturday continues live from Atlantic City here on CBS. I've been joined at ringside here by Gil Clancy. And Gil, certainly, uh, I know you anticipate this fight as much as I do. Canizales and Seabrooks should make for a very exciting matchup. We know a guy like Seabrooks, an exciting fighter to watch, and young Orlando Canizales can punch. Uh, Tim, these are two great kids. They both had great amateur backgrounds. Seabrook has got a lot of international experience. He's the champion of the world. He's fought much better opposition than Canizales, and especially in the heavier weight classes. The thing with Seabrooks, though, he used to have an iron chin. His last three or four fights, he's been on the deck. Now, Orlando Canizales is a good puncher. That can work in his favor. I don't know whether the experience is going to pay off or the good punch is going to pay off. Tough one to pick. I'm looking forward to it. Well, that's the mystery of this one for sure. Now, Orlando Canizales, inspired by his older brother, Gabby, knows the importance of this fight for his own place in the spotlight. Being a world champion, that's my dream. That's my, that's my goal. And then beating a, winning a, a, a IBF title and who, uh, whom uh, uh, Super is a good champion at 118, so it's put me, it will put me in the spotlight. Certainly, as we look at Orlando Canizales, uh, you know that uh, his brother Gabby's looking in back home in Texas, cheering for this young man to become a world champion as well. Well, now, Kelvin Seabrooks has really had a remarkable career. Got a lot of losses on his record, as we know, but more importantly, I think, to his success, his last four fights have been in Europe. He won his title away from home. He's defended it three times on the road. That's impressive. Well, Tim, it's very, very impressive. He's matured as a fighter. He's fought in Europe. He's fought in Australia. He's the champion of the world. He's used to the pressure. That's going to work in his favor. Seabrooks, on the other hand, happy to be at home here in the United States on American television to show people what he can really do.
It means a lot to me. First of all, it means more to me to be here in the United States because I want the kids to see what I've been fighting for. And uh, with me trying to set an example for kids to keep them off the streets, away from drugs and out of trouble, it means more for me to fight here for them, for the kids, as much as it does the adults. Two classy, likable young men in combat over 15 rounds. We'll be back with round one of our title bout after these words from your local station. Round defends his IBF welterweight championship against Jorge Baca next weekend on CBS Sports Saturday. Back live in Atlantic City, now let's go to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sands Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. This afternoon, Pop Rank Incorporated presents World Championship Boxing. With the approval of the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Commissioner Larry Hazard, this bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, President Robert W. Lee. The three judges for this bout will be Frank Brunette, Richard F. Murray, and Phil Newman. The referee for this contest is Rudy Battle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble 15 rounds for the Bantamweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the blue trunks with red and white trim and weighs an even 118 pounds. From Laredo, Texas, he brings a professional record of 19 victories, one defeat and one draw, 16 KOs. He's the number five ranked challenger in the world, ladies and gentlemen, Orlando Canizale. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, the blue corner. He weighs an even 118 pounds, wearing the red trunks with white trim from Charlotte, North Carolina. As a professional, 25 victories and 13 defeats. 20 of his 25 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the IBF bantamweight champion of the world, Kelvin, the Raging Zebra. Kelvin Seabrooks, that uh, great looking smile you saw moments ago, uh, now gone entirely as he focuses on this championship bout. Rudy Battle with the final instructions. Any questions in here? I'm looking forward to a clean contest. Good luck to both of you. Let's shake hands. And a quick look at the tail of the tape for this bout. Both coming in right at the limit. The bantamweight limit, 118 pounds. A slight height advantage goes to Seabrooks. And he is the older, more experienced fighter of the two. A record of 25 and 13 with 20 knockouts. Orlando Canizales, 19-1 and 1. His only loss came here on CBS against flyweight Paul Gonzalez, the okay, Olympic nice hero. So we're underway with Seabrooks in red and Canizales in blue. Round one scheduled for 15. Might be one of the last 15 round title bouts that any of you will see as the IBF will join the other uh, alphabet soup organizations in going to an official 12 round championship distance starting in September. Kelvin Seabrooks, a somewhat late bloomer uh, in the last couple of years coming on, winning his championship, defending it three times. As he points out, many of his losses against very good people in boxing came as he was fighting over the weight. He had difficulty getting fights at 118 pounds. So most of the losses that show up in his record are against guys who were bigger at the time. You know, Tim, speaking of weight, the fact that they weighed in last night instead of the morning of the fight could possibly help Seabrooks because he's really about 120, 223 pounder. And he's had time since last night to put on a little weight. And he looks a lot bigger than Orlando Canizales in the ring. Good solid right landed by Canizales. And a solid left jab. Both of these guys are good boxers, Tim. Both over 100 amateur fights, great winning records. Both know their way around the ring. Anna Dallas made the semifinals of the National Golden Gloves in 1983 and was a quarter finalist in the same year in the National Junior Olympics. Seabrooks, with the experience in the pro ranks, four title fights under his belt, won the championship in May of 87. There's a knockdown. 
Gonzalez sending Seabrooks to the canvas. He's been there before, but this time it's going to be a little tough for him to bounce back. He's still wobbling. Tim, he got nailed, got beat to the punch with a straight right hand by Canizales. He couldn't have got hit harder than that. He's in trouble. Legs are wobbly. And Canizales going to the body very intelligently here, looking for the right shot. Nice and cool. Canizales is very cool, Tim, picking him apart. Landed an overhand right that wobbled Keith Seabrooks again. And Seabrooks is on wobbly legs. Look at those beautiful combinations by Canizales. Seabrooks just trying to survive here. He's got the gloves up, but hasn't grabbed Canizales. Canizales continues to fire. And Tim, what beautiful punches. Short, accurate, what a snap. Seabrook lost his feet from under himself there without a blow. He is still having difficulty with his legs. Canizales patiently firing combinations, and the bell will save Seabrook here. He will go to his corner, a very unsteady young man. We'll go back and look at the knockdown coming abruptly in round number one. And here it comes, Tim. Watch, watch Canis as He's setting them up beautifully. And there goes that straight right hand. He beat Seabrooks to the punch. They both tried to throw right hands, and you can't get hit harder than that. Caught him coming in. We'll see it one more time. Perfectly timed punch, a little faint to the left. Backs out. Now watch him here. Sees the opening and bang. Seabrooks was a half hour late throwing his right hand that time, Tim. He really got beat to the punch. Tremendous first round for Orlando Canizales, not just putting the champion in trouble like this, but he looked so good right from the opening bell. Everything he did. Tim, he stayed so nice and cool, kept the pressure on, didn't stand and look at Seabrooks. He was doing the job, and he was under control, complete control. Now, Seabrooks has been here before. He's been somewhat of an up-and-down champion, literally. Has gotten on the canvas, off the canvas to win fights before. They usually have occurred early in about. Let's see what he can do this time. Round two, scheduled for 15. His legs look a little better after the minute rest. Well, one punch can take care of that again, Tim. Indeed. around the left eye of the champion Seabrooks. There's that quick right hand of Canizales again, Tim, over the jab. Canizales with a little bit of the uh, Tyson look uh, sartorially here as he has no socks on under his boxing shoes. He's wearing uh, red instead of the black that Mike Tyson prefers. Well, Tim, his feet look like Tyson's and his head looks like Roberto Duran. That's right. Pretty good combination. Pretty good left hand landed by the champion. The first one that's been able to get Canizala's attention. See, Brooks look, looks like he's coming to life, Tim. Yes, indeed. He's certainly uh, showing his experience here, coming back this well in round two, but he just took another right hand. Canizala's backs him up and works the body again. Beautiful fighter, Canizales. What a well-schooled fighter. Body and head. And he knows when he hurts you. Credit to Jesse Reed, his trainer down in Houston. He was here in the corner with him today, but trains at the HBA. Tim, he's camp. making such beautiful moves. He's hiding. He's hiding on Seabrook. Seabrook doesn't know where he is. Takes that little step over and comes back in front of him. Beautiful moves by Canizales, side to side. Under a minute to go, round two. A little blood from the nose of the champion, Seabrooks. Seabrooks gathered himself well here at the start of round two after being knocked down. But Canizales has taken most of the round away from him since then. Watch Canizales take that little step off to the side, throw Seabrooks off balance. Seabrooks with a right hand lead. There's that side to side motion by Canizales again. Under the 30 second mark we go. He hurt Seabrook with another right hand. Tim, he has him in trouble again. Working the uppercut on the ropes. 
final seconds of round number two. Round three. Round number three live from Atlantic City. Tim Ryan, Joe Clancy on CBS Sports Saturday watching Orlando Canizales in blue against the champion. Bantamweight, IBF, Kelvin Seabrooks in red. A knockdown in round one. If you just joined us, scored by Canizales. A little more life going here now. He's talking to Orlando and probably probably saying to him, hey, I'm, I'm alive and well. This has got some time to go. And we point out the history of Seabrooks. He's done it before. Down early, back up to win. He's got his hands full with this young man, Canizales. What an improvement from uh, 1986 when we saw Canizales against Paul Gonzalez in about his 10th pro fight. Well, Tim, also, he had to make 112 pounds for that fight. He never was 112 pounder. That had something to do with it. And you remember, Paul Gonzalez is a good boxer. Had Gonzalez, Gonzalez on the deck. And, of course, he only won two rounds of the fight, in our opinion. But uh, he has improved. And there's that big right hand again. Over the jab. And then rocks the champion, Seabrooks, once more. Seabrooks willing to trade with him now. Snappy punches by Seabrooks. Every time Canizales moves to his right, he takes Seabrooks off balance. There he goes again, a little step over through the right hand, right over the jab. Good combination landed by the champion. Under a minute to go. Round number three. Seabrooks from Charlotte, North Carolina, has the mayor, Sue Myricks, here to watch him. And the new owner of the Charlotte NBA franchise, George Shin. Plain load of folks came up to cheer on their world champion. A good combination landed again by Canizales. Every time Seabrook throws that right hand, he leaves himself wide open. But he just scored his best shot with a deal right to the chin, and there's another right hand landed by Seabrook. They're trading right hands now, Tim. Combination back. That one blocked by Seabrook. And a right hand lead landed by Seabrook. Final seconds of round number three. The champion coming back well in this last minute of this round. Round four. Round four upcoming. Scheduled for 15. A better showing by the champion Seabrooks in round three. We scored it even as uh, in the early going. Canizales had the best of the round, and then the champion rallied to finish well. Knocked down in round one by the challenger in blue, Orlando Canizales. Has him ahead on our cards. Tim, that knockdown for Canizales in round one was like a good dose of medicine for the challenger. He was going into a championship fight. He had to be a little tight. And to knock the champion down like that certainly had to build his confidence. Seabrooks in red, Canizales in blue. We are live from Atlantic City on CBS Sports Saturday. More boxing action tomorrow. Razai Alusia Bramble, the former Livingstone Bramble and former WBA lightweight champ, takes on Freddie Pendleton, a rematch of a 10-round draw they fought some months ago. Good combination by Canizales. And there's a right hand by the champion. That rocked Canizales with a nice move out of danger. There was that little slip over to the right again. He actually hides on Seabrook in the ring. Good movement, that kind of lateral footwork you described and presenting angles to your opponent. Uh, Orlando's really giving uh, his teacher just what he would ask for. Well, 
know, Tim, sometimes you can work and work with a fighter, but there's certain things you can't teach them. Most fighters move to their left naturally. It's difficult for them to take that step over. The way Canizales just did then and threw that beautiful combination. That's not an easy move to make. Uppercut landed by Canizales. The left hand. Under a minute to go, round four. Canizales better not stand right in front of Seabrooks, Tim. Seabrooks can't kick. Yeah, he just paid for it there. And Seabrooks, the champion, wailing away. What a start to this fight. Steve Booker's looking to nail him with that right hand. You can see him setting, trying to set him up for it. But Canizala's right hand is so much quicker. He drives the champion back to the ropes again. Coming to the end of round four. Round five, nice and clean. Former three-time world champion Alexis Arguello is here to enjoy this fight. Boxing fans always know when the good matchups are taking place. And the boxing community knew Seabrooks Canizales would be a good one, and so far it has. Into round five we go. The challenger in blue, Seabrooks the champion in red. He's been down once in round one. Seabrooks' right eye looks a little angry now, Tim. As the fight progresses, it could cause him a problem. Looks like it's closing. And a solid right again landed by Canizales. Look at the way he switches from head to body and back again, Tim. That's schooling. There's that step over to the right. He just hides on him when he does that. Good start in round five for Canizales. And there comes Seabrooks back. That straight right hand of Seabrooks is a dangerous punch. And left of the body is impressive from Canizales. There's that slide over. Tim, that is such a beautiful move. All these young boxers watching this fight should watch Canizales. There it is again. Maybe they'll learn something. Beautiful move. And he is finding his target. Starting to paint the face of the champion, Seabrooks, and continues to bang at the body. A big round for Canizales. He's fighting like he has a train to catch there. Seabrook's flat-footed there against the ropes. He's got to get out of there, or this one might not go past five. Oh, he, he nailed Canizales with a good right hand, but absolutely nothing happened. That has to be discouraging for Seabrook's. Seabrook's leg was a little wobbly again, as they were in round one when he got decked. of the champion Kelvin Seabrooks in this bantamweight bout. We head into round six. Trying to reduce the swelling under both eyes. And a little nick, I believe, at the uh, corner of the left eye. Blood from the nose as well as Orlando Canizales in blue is well ahead on our cards. We've given only uh, the third round uh, half of it to the champion Seabrooks and four rounds to Canizales. With a knockdown in round one if you joined us. Seabrook's people uh, hired Ralph Citro to work their uh, corner as the cut man today, and he has been busy already. Seabrook just tried a new move, Tim, that I've never seen before. He just looked landed like a good right. Carry looked on, like no. he was swimming. 
I guess he has to try something different, Tim. Something has to change for him. His manager, Bill Reynolds, uh, advised him to stay off the ropes where he camped in round number five, and it did cost him as Canizal is uh, fired away at will. So they are in the middle of the ring. Canizal seems comfortable everywhere. Seabrook's conditioning for this bout. I think you see what happens? Seabrook's is trying to put pressure on him now. And all Canizales does is go over to the right and takes the pressure right off himself. There's a little cut at the left eye of Canizales. And it's bothering him already. He's been wiping the blood away. Seabrook picks up his pace. Yeah, and he's, he's blinking that left eye, Tim. <laughs> yeah, it looks like an angry cut. exactly when it occurred. I didn't either, either, Tim. Whether their heads banged or not, I don't know, but Seabrooks is obviously rising to this occasion, and he is backing up Canizales. The challenger now looks to be in trouble. But he nailed Seabrook with a good right hand and a good left hook to the body, Tim. Get through this round. Move a lot to the right. Kill the clock. Good right hand by the champion, Zebra. Final seconds of round six. The referee just said it was a legal punch, a good right hand. There you go. A legal punch. Uh, Rudy Battle is uh, also informing the corner of Canizales to that effect. Well, Jesse Reed had better do a good job on that cut, Tim. It goes to show you, that's why fight trainers and managers get gray hair. It looked like everything was going Canizales' way. Had everything his own way. All of a sudden, here he comes up with this bad cut. I'd hate to see a fighter lose because of a cut eye in a fight like this. Well, I sure would as well. Uh, Gil, one thing that should be said on Seabrook's behalf is that that was his best round of the fight. So it was unfortunate for Canizales that he suffered the cut eye. But for Seabrook, he finally got himself into this on our card, at least by winning the first round as we have seen it thus far. We're into round seven. Scheduled for 15 under the IBF rules, which will change on the 1st of September. And the IBF will go to 12. You know, Tim, Canizales fights in two gears. He boxes for a while, he doesn't do much, and all of a sudden, he'll hurt uh, Seabrooks a little bit, and then he really opens up. If I was in his corner now, I'd have him really pressuring Seabrooks, try to get him out of there. These kids are such bait kids. They just apologized to each other for something. All right, yeah. For I don't know what it was. Yeah, but I believe it was a, just a borderline low blow that Seabrooks landed and immediately apologized. But we were impressed with them yesterday. They're, they're two true gentlemen, classy young people. And they made it very clear that the fight takes place inside the ring. They have a lot of respect for each other outside. Domination for Seabrooks and a good right hand. Canizales is going to have to stand his ground and take control again, Tim, because Seabrook is putting pressure on him. Despite the fast start by Canizales, Seabrook has never lost his composure, and he lands a good right hand and a combination behind it, blocking Canizales. Very professional performance by Seabrook. Get 
get lost in the shadow of the, all of the hoopla surrounding the heavyweights. Yet uh, the boxing skills are certainly uh, commensurate. Often, uh, often they are much more skilled boxers. And Tim, both of these guys can punch. They can both get a guy out with one punch. So it's not just that you're watching boxing skills, you're watching punching power as well. 20 KOs and 25 wins for Seabrooks. 16 and 19 wins for Canada. Right hand by Seabrooks nearly took Canadala's head off. He picked it up at the last instant, reduced the impact. Second mark we go round seven. Impressive comeback here in these last couple of rounds for the champion Seabrooks. In technology from Remington. Tim Ryan with Bill Clancy live from Atlantic City. Round number eight. Orlando Canizales getting more attention to the cut over his left eye. Champion Seabrooks as we see it coming on in the last couple of rounds well. Tim, uh, Canizales is doing something strange and he's been doing it since early in the fight. When he comes out of his corner, he keeps shaking his head like something's bothering him. I don't know what it is or why, but he's doing it round after round. Maybe he had thumbed in the eye or whatever happened, something is bothering him. We're into the eighth round. Scheduled for 15. IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World at stake. Tremendous start by the challenger, Canizales, which included a knockdown on round one. Dominance, as we saw it, through round five. But Seabrooks rallying in six and seven. And Jesse Reed has done a marvelous job on that cut, Tim. There's not a drop of blood. And Sitpo has done a marvelous job on Seabrook. It goes to show you it pays to have two experienced cornermen in there. There's that little skip over to the right. He take, takes the power right away from Seabrook. It's only when he's moving to his left that he's within Seabrook's punching range. But he has to peg war himself now when he moves over there. Has to come back punching. Coming back in front, but he's not punching. There's that skip over, but back again with no punching. Tim also, Canizales had to get a little discouraged because he hit Seabrooks with everything but the kitchen sink. And here's the guy still there and putting pressure on him. That has to discourage you a little bit. Well, I think we're seeing a little. Oh! And Seabrooks with a good combination. And Canizales with a good left hook. Tim that almost tore his head off. Trading punches again in this eighth round. Canizales took one right on the nose, and now that cut has opened up again on the corner of his left eye. Under a minute to go in the eighth. I think discouraging is exactly the right word, Gil, because Canizales just seems to have lost a little of that fire and confidence that he showed earlier in the fight. Just the fact that Seabrooks is still there, continuing to punch back, maybe having a mental effect on him. Seabrooks just works the center of the ring. He just turns in a little circle there. Doesn't do a whole lot of chasing, but he's always in punching position. Well, he paid attention to what his corner men call him. Jimmy stays off the ropes. Canis Alice just is not punching as much as he was punching earlier. Not moving those hands. Coming to the end of round number eight. Canis Alice backing Seabrooks to the ropes again. Nine. Nine close up look at Orlando Canizales, the cut at the corner of his left eye reopened in the eighth round, but Canizales comes out quickly here in round nine. All right, Tim, Canizales finished the last round very strongly, had Seabrooks in a little bit of trouble, I think he came right out to try to get it over with. And the doctor was in Seabrooks' corner at the end of the last round, I don't know why again, but he was in the corner where Canizales has the cut eye and he was in Seabrooks' corner. So whether they called him or whatever happened, again, I don't know. Seabrooks, we thought, uh, was winning that eighth round rather handily, but a good finish by Canizales. Sometimes I can steal around, in quotes, we would say, on uh, the judges' scorecard. We'll find out when the uh, scoring is announced. 
if it went to Seabrooks, he's now closed up the gap in this bout, scheduled for 15. Tim, if I was working with Canizales, I'd tell him, you have to let it all hang out, kid. You have to open up, because when he does open up, he's very, very effective. Blood streaming from that cut at the corner of Canizales' left eye again. Canizales, he slips a punch and throws beautiful combinations to the body and head. And there's that slide over again. Every time he does that, it's effective. Now, Clancy, if you're Seabrooks, you've been watching it throughout this fight and getting hit with it. What do you do to defend it? Tim, what he has to try to do is keep his left foot in between Canizales' feet, and he has to punch more to the body, especially with the right hand. Canizales landed a straight right hand up the pipe. When you throw a right hand to the body, Tim, you feel the guy, you know where he is. You try to hit that head when it's moving, it's kind of tough. For a minute to go, round nine. The mistake that, that Canizales is making now, Tim, a lot of times he's right in front of Seabrooks and he doesn't peg. He has to peg anytime he's in front of the guy. Shaking that head, Canizales. Under the 30-second mark we go. This one has been as advertised. We're in the ninth round. And blow to blow they go. Right hand and a left by Canizales. The champion in trouble again. And he is in trouble, Tim. a combination that had Seabrooks in trouble again. A big left hand, a right uppercut by the challenger, Canizales. Now we're back live in round 10. Canizales in blue, keeping up the pressure. IBF Bantamweight Championship. And Seabrooks, Tim, Tim can hardly stand. Doesn't have a leg onto him now. But does he have courage? Trying to rest on those ropes so he can get a little bit of leverage. And Seabrook is telling him to come on. Come on and fight. Yeah, well, that's where he wants him, though. And I think you're right. His legs just aren't there for him to work too well out in the middle of the ring. Those years of experience showing here in Seabrook, who has not lost his composure despite the assault from Canizales. Five-year-old champion Kelvin Seabrooks in his fourth title defense. 22-year-old challenger from Laredo, Texas, Orlando Canizales. Whether those are nervous ticks or not, we pointed out how Canizales seems to kind of shake his head frequently. He also does it with his right hand. Saw him do it there. I often see guys trying to get loose in the gym like that. I think with him, it's just a, it just appears to be just a little nervous habit. There he goes, shaking that head again. And Tim, it's not because he was cut, because he was doing it before he was yes, cut. Yes, that's right. And they've done a, a, quite a good job in uh, keeping that cut from becoming a real problem for him. Jesse Reed, the cut man and trainer. Tim, I know it's tough. It's a 15-round fight. But it seems to me that any time that Thomas Alex wants to, he can turn it on and really take over. But he's spending a lot of time studying Seabrook's now. And Seabrook's legs are not too good. He's allowing him to get back into the fight again. Seabrook's just a little bounce there. Try to get that feeling back in his legs, and he does indeed look a little stronger. Under a minute to go, round 10.
job here. And this has been an outstanding fight. He's let them fight. Coming to the end of round 10. Scheduled for 15. We are live from Atlantic City. Entering round 11, scheduled for 15. The IBF Bantamweight Championship, 118 pounds. The champion Seabrooks in red. The challenger Canadales in blue. Tim Ryan and Joe Clancy watching a most exciting fight. Everything it was billed to be. All right, Tim, now this is the 11th round in a 15-round fight. This is the championship distance. The last five rounds in these fights are always the rounds that decide them. And I'm sure that in Canizales' mind, he's never gone 15 before, so it has to be a concern to him whether or not he can do it. Maybe that's why he hasn't opened up more than he should, than he has uh, earlier in the fight. And we have the challenger ahead on our card, scoring just three rounds for Seabrooks. Mind you, there was another... Uh, close round that uh, could be tipped in his favor. You're not sure how every judge sees each three minutes of each round. He scored one even back in round number three. And Tim, you have to remember that it's the point system, so that knockdown is the same as winning two or three rounds. And there was a knockdown scored by Canizales in round one. I know if I was in Seabrook's corner, I'd certainly be concerned. I'd tell him you're gonna have to go out and try to get this kid out of there. Gonzalez leaning in. Ready to go. A little blood from the nose of the champion Seabrook. Both landing in that exchange. When Canizales turns it on, Tim, he's the boss. Sports Sunday against Razai Aluja Bramble. Round number 12. We heard the referee Rudy Battle telling the boxers it was the last round. Uh, Rudy's uh, used to work in the 12 round bouts, we uh, assume, but this one is scheduled for 15. And Tim, this round, Canizales came out of his corner with the blood streaming out of his eye. They did not stop the cut at the end of the round. Seabrooks behind on our card. They scored round 11 even. Joe Clancy gave it to Canizales, but either way, the challenger ahead. And remember, he scored a knockdown in round number one, so we certainly agree the champion's going to have to stop him the way things are going as we see it. Then sometimes fighters are too game for their own good. They had really better watch Seabrooks very, very closely. He's taken a lot of punishment in this fight. Right down the pipe. You know, in the in interviewing Seabrooks, Tim, he he had uh, Orlando Canizales figured finished uh, figured exactly perfectly. He said he's faster than his brother is. He has faster hands than his brother. I think it's going to be a more difficult fight than when I fought Gabby, and he lost to Gabby.
Seabrooks knew what Canizales was going to do, but so far he hasn't been able to stop him from doing it. That's the problem. Under a minute to go in round number 12. shots in this round does not appear to be busy enough here to try to create an opportunity. Beautiful combination by Canizales. Made a miss, nailed him with two good punches. Under 30 seconds we go in round number 12. Canizales back to the champion against the ropes again. Scheduled for 15, IBF Bantamweight title at stake. Kelvin Seabrooks, the champion in red, behind on our cards against Orlando Canizales in blue, the challenger from Laredo, Texas. The brother of WBA former uh, Bantamweight champion, Gabby Canizales. All right, Tim, this is new territory for Orlando Canizales. He's never gone into the 13th round before. And look at the condition these kids are in. Still bouncing, still moving, still fainting. Everything that a fight is supposed to do. Beautiful moves. Dallas lands the combination. Tim Seabrook has to gamble. Seabrook has to gamble. It's as though he's trying to lure Canizales into a position where he can land a one big punch, and I'm not sure that's going to get it done. Well, he tried that one big punch, Tim. Canizales was just a little too quick. Seconds, round 13. Round, 14. round number 14 of this 15 round IBF Bantamweight Championship bout. The champion, Kelvin Seabrooks, in red. Behind on our cards, the challenger, Orlando Canizales from Laredo, Texas, has been very impressive thus far. And it's been the tough, long fight we expected. Tim, you know when you're a trainer, you worry about <clears throat> you worry, excuse me, you worry about everything. Now the fact that Canizales keeps shaking his head, that could affect the judging. They could be thinking this kid's getting hurt. And it's, it seems to me as if it's just a habit. But if you're a trainer, you'd be worrying about it. You'd say, stop shaking your head. It'd be a pretty hard thing to do if it's just a little nervous gesture like the one he has with his right hand. Beautiful move. Sure is. Mm. Live from Atlanta, 
Lake City watching Orlando Canizales in blue, the challenger, trying to lift the crown. The fourth title defense by Kelvin Seabrooks in Charlotte, North Carolina. Like Gabby tried, <coughs> Orlando tried something different that time, Tim. There he is sliding over. He threw a right hand instead of the left hook that he comes back with. This kid's comfortable in the ring right now. appeared that way for the last several rounds and is now coming down to the 15th and final round on our card Canizales with a big lead you hear Rudy Battle uh, telling the boxers it is the last round he told them that at the 12th round when it uh, is about to begin but this time he's got it right let them get it up Jesse Reed has done a good job on the cut, and you see Ralph Citro in the foreground. There's Reed working on Canizales, and neither of the cut man wanting uh, anything to go wrong here in the final three minutes of this bout. An appreciative audience in the sold-out Copa Room in the stands applauding these two warriors. Round 15. You know, Tim, usually you can see a great fight. You see a standing ovation at the end of the fight. Here the people are standing up after the 14th round and giving these kids a standing ovation. They recognize class when they see it. And this has been class all the way. One knockdown scored by the challenger, Canizales and Blue, in round one. A couple of near knockdowns by Canizales. Seabrook's picking up the pace here in the final round. Well, he has to, Tim. In my opinion, he has to score a knockout to win this fight. Oh, a big right hand by Canizales. Flush on the button. The champion up, but in difficulty again. Hey, how are you doing? You all right? Yeah. Okay, hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Canizales Tim. hurt him with an uppercut. They should Back stop this fight, again. Tim. They should stop this fight. Rudy Battle steps in. Orlando Canizales is the new IBF Bantamweight champion. He wanted to follow in the footsteps of his brother Gabby, who was a world champion at the same weight, the WBA world title. And now it is Orlando's time for Kelvin Seabrook stopped in the 15th round. Tremendously game effort by the champion. But today, youth was served by Orlando Canizales. Youth and talent, Tim. Beautiful exhibition by Orlando Canizales. Josephine Abercrombie, who runs the Houston Boxing Association camp down in Houston, Texas, in there to congratulate her new champion. His stablemate, Frank Tate, will be defending his title in the near future. Let's go back and look at the knockdown in round number 15. A huge crashing right hand. And for the second time in the bout, Seabrooks went to the canvas. The first time way back in round one. 
Tremendous shot, Gil, and when he got him in trouble again in the corner, Rudy Battle wisely stepped in and stopped it. And we have a new IBF Bantamweight champion, and we'll be back with an unusual look at one of the boxers in tomorrow's card, Razai Aluja Bramble, and we'll also meet these two gallant boxers when we return after this from your local stations. We're back here live in Atlantic City, and let's get the official time on the stoppage from ring announcer Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Sands Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey, here is the official time. Referee Rudy Battle stops his bout. At one minute, three seconds of the 15th round, the winner by TKO and new RBF Phantomweight Champion of the World, Orlando Candelare. All right, Orlando. Orlando Candelare is getting his belt. Kelvin Seabrook, look at this, folks. Kelvin Seabrook is helping to put the World Championship belt that he has just lost to Orlando Canizales is helping to put it on, and we told you what two classy and great young men these uh, two boxers were before the fight, and you're seeing more of it now. Orlando, congratulations. Please stay here with us, Calvin, if you would. Orlando, uh, first of all, uh, it was a great performance by a young fighter against an experienced champion. A tremendous fight, what everybody expected. First of all, I want to thank CBS for telling us this fight, and I want to say hello to everybody back in Laredo. Well, I'm sure you had a lot of fans there. We got to find out about your hands. Uh, it, uh, we get the impression you may have uh, broken both of them. The left one's badly swollen. Well, uh, I heard my, I heard both of my hands in the second round, and I was fighting, through, I was fighting throughout the, the fight with pain. But you know, I wanted to start real bad, and I just kept fighting bad. Well, a gritty display. And Kelvin, you had to get off the floor in round one. You've had to do that before. Did it, did it worry you then? Did you say, hey, this happens to me all the time? Well, you know, I'm used to that. But you know, like I said. Candace Allen deserves a shot at the title. That's why I gave it to him. That's why I gave it to the number one contender. You know, he fought Paulo Gonzalez, and it was a good fight. And then he came up and he fought Harold Petty, which he knocked Harold Petty out. So I said, well, okay, now this is his chance. He came up when I came up. And you know, I fought his brother Gabby. He fought an undercut. I really, really impressed. So I said, well, this is his shot. He deserves it. Well, you were a classy champion. And uh, even though you've uh, relinquished your belt, I, I know you hope to get a rematch. I'm sure the fans would like to see that. But Gabby will be facing, or rather, Gabby. Orlando will face number one. And speaking of Gabby, what do you think he's doing right now looking in? Oh, well, right now he's, he's fighting uh, uh, the, the last the last week of this month. And I, I think he's going to get the title back. Yeah, but I bet he's not in the gym right now. I bet he's watching you. Oh, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, everybody's at home enjoying themselves. All right. Well, it was a great show, Orlando. Uh, tremendous performance. We wish you the very best in the future, and uh, I'm sure everybody's hoping to see you two guys against each other again. Great boxing match. All right, now we're going to come back with a special look at one of the opponents in tomorrow's Pendleton Bramble match, a close-up look at Roz Ayalujo Bramble after these words. <laughs> 